impact. Um, Isa Tujai is former Royal Society of Edinburgh Enterprise Fellow and co-founder of company Drink Biotic, launched whilst graduating with a first class degree in international business with risk management from Glasgow Caledonian University, where she, where she is now an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial resident. ICE2 launched Biotic with a social mission to inspire and empower female cooperatives in rural Gambia to improve income, health and nutrition, building on 10 years of experience running community agriculture product projects. Without further, further ado, a very warm welcome to ICE2 Jai. Over to you, ICE2. Thank you so much, Prina, for that introduction. Um, hi, everyone. My name is ICE2 Jai again. And as Bruna said, I'm the co-founder and director of Drink Biotech. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, innovating value chains for social impact uh, through functional health drinks made from the African Bayabab superfood. And loosely, I'll be picking up on three key points, uh, talking about how we as a business are working to build impact throughout our value and supply chains, innovating using healthy ingredients, and some of the growth as well as some of the challenges that we've experienced along the way. So to begin with, I guess my um, experience or my inspiration, should I say, comes from growing up in rural Gambia, uh, West Africa, where there is a seven month long dry period with no rain and 70% of the population lives below the poverty line. And understanding many of these challenges within the community villages where there is high level of poverty and a lack of opportunity, we saw the female cooperative model as a strong mechanism to eliminate many of the challenges that we've seen, especially in around hunger and malnutrition. However, we also saw it as a, as a, as a purpose to empowering uh, female specifically that alleviate the family as a whole. We know that women contribute 90% of their earned income to their families and have a significant impact on the economy as a whole. So prior to Drink Biotech for the last 10 years, my partner Paul and I have joined forces to support female cooperatives to develop agricultural gardens to tackle that seven month dry period to improve income, health and nutrition. So what does these projects look like? So our projects will range from supporting the females or schools sometimes to establish vegetable gardens all the way to establishing cattle drinking troughs. They can range from supporting with fencing, financial management, training with crops, as well as bringing in some business expertise in the local areas. So we've helped them establish credibility and traction from the start. Um, this garden actually, for example, is one of the first that we've worked with Kabakamo women cooperative and it's become a national showcase garden of the back of the work we've done which later went on to help them secure more funding from the government and it's now one of the largest uh, women cooperative gardens in that region. Other areas involve researching and also producing natural happy sites um, as manifested here sharing best practices of how to use those happy sites, crop rotation to prevent some of um, the infections that we've seen through to more innovative projects like supporting with one of the first uh, garden, uh, garden, uh, banana garden plantation in the region, which later went on to problem solve some really uh, challenging issues within the community, like a drought and flooding issues. There's also access to water, uh, clean water uh, using less intensive water irrigation systems and technologies moving away from just unsafe holes in the ground to more sustainable water supplies, and also looking at solar power energy, uh, where we've seen quite a lot of growth currently uh, in the local communities that we've served. So what are some of the, the big, big lessons that we've learned over the years is, I think like looking at how to build community cohesion is have to be one of the center of what we do, even within the gardens that we support where you have different tribes and uh, different cultures as well. So there is improved information flow and delivery of incremental value over time because what we will normally see is when days a project starts, you normally see the whole traditional method of we start the project, this is the outputs we're going to do and we only get that at the end of each project. So 
learning from modern organizations who have flat hierarchies, moving to more multidisciplinary agile teams, and working in really good lean ways has inspired our next phase of uh, projects. Because why not? So we've seen lean and agile principles, their processes and tools uh, have driven reduced cost, improved quality and speed to market in many industries. Why not uh, community driven agriculture? So although COVID has um, slowed down most of our work currently uh, recently, but we are very excited with some of the models that we are looking at with the communities and what this would mean to how we deliver some of these projects come next year. So we as a we, we have uh, had a number of historic successes with the community gardens, which mainly came from personal uh, fundraising collaborations with international charities, local NGOs and community groups. But our vision for Biotech is to be a sustainable vehicle to lead on these projects. This would mean connecting the community groups to a national owned association, developing more innovative models and providing access to markets, all locally as well as internationally. So as a company, which is Biotech, our mission is to inspire and empower healthy communities around the world. We do this by identifying and cultivating transformative botanics and ingredients and ensuring everyone wearing our value chain from the farmers that we work with to everyone who consume our products to benefit from those natural wellness solutions and succeed and live life fully. So how does Biotech attain that in the UK and with our products? So we know that in the UK as a nation, we consume less than 50 to 60% of our daily fiber intake. And we know this is an unfortunate familiarity across many Western diets. And there is strong research showing that high intake of fiber is associated with lower risk of heart disease, stroke, type two diabetes, numerous digestive issues and bowel cancer. Fiber also keeps you fuller for longer with potential to manage weight gain, aid digestion, prevent constipation as well. So we've launched Biotic, a dairy-free high fiber prebiotic drinks range made from the African Baybuff superfood. Naturally high in vitamins and minerals, but uniquely it is high in soluble and insoluble fiber. Good for the gut, as a prebiotic are competing many probiotics because it multiplies the healthy bacteria already in your system. It's also delicious in sherbet in taste, no added sugars or sweeteners. It's vegan, gluten-free, and core to our mission as a company is continuously researching and improving our wellness solutions that benefit everyone throughout our value chain. In 2017, the BBC and CNN showcased a case study showing a professor from King's College London uh, traveling to an East African tribe, one of the last living hunter-gatherers in the world. Professor Tim Spector, having consumed the same diet as the tribe, with biobab as one of the key, key and staple ingredient within the diet, showed a 20% increase in the diversity of its microbiome. So, what are biobabs? Biobabs are huge ancient trees that grow around Africa. They're very symbolic to so many different cultures across the continent, uh, showcasing a, sim a, a, a resilience, a wisdom, and definitely strength. They're mainly well harvested by female cooperatives, so the real investment does go back to supporting those women and their communities. It's a known ingredient within many consumer markets. Their power alone in the US is forecasted to grow to $400 million uh, by 2024. In, there is though a tension, I guess, between eating local and global demand and as our palates grow fonder for more exotic tastes and ingredients, we also seek out the 99% of the world's healthy botanics that currently do not reach our shelves. And I would really love to see more equity going to the mainly undeveloped countries that supply them. And I hope we can find new creative ways to build mutual beneficial communities that can help uplift the poorest and reduce the gaps in standards of living. And that really is a part that excites me. So, Looking at our journey in terms of bringing a product to market, it's an interesting one. Um, we've gone through quite a few uh, different iterations as a business, and I'm 
I am looking forward to going to that next stage of the presentation. So from the beginning for us, I guess we were very clear we wanted to develop a product that was clean and inclusive and contributed to tackling health challenges. And I guess that comes from my experience living in the Gambia where there's some very sad realities of health there. But again, living in the UK before biotech, I've seen some of those health challenges are also here, like the life of fiber, for example, in our diet and the consequences of that. So, but I guess for the bringing the product to market, part of the challenge is this tension between the pillars of viability, feasibility and desirability. And for us as a business with very strong core mission adding sustainability at that end just also adds another complexity to it. And I'll talk a little bit about that. But developing something that people want or need, it's producible and scalable within the restriction of outsource manufacturing, the model that we've embarked on. Um, it, it is, is something and is something that commercially would, would make money and be investable. It's, it's a challenge for, I guess, for many startups within the sector. So from day one, we know that bringing in, we were bringing an innovative ingredient to the market that was likely unknown at the time. And being high in fiber also limits the manufacturing partners we can work with. However, we have innovated and experimented in the kitchen, in our university, uh, food science labs, within different processing and manufacturing sites across the UK. The outputs of that, as you can see on the screen, is, is trialing this across many farmers markets, food and trade shows, shows uh, show events, uh, sports events, sorry, across the UK. And this now, I believe, is one of our strongest assets, actually, the knowledge and experience we've built on how to manage and work with ingredients like this and similar health ingredients, as well as the ability to hone in, hone in, in those early consumer feedback to continuously iterate and improve our offering. The beginning of these trials also did involve looking at different product types, different consumer groups, as well as uh, different packaging formats. We started with a simple version one, a smoothie in a plastic bottle, and then trialed some small bottles for unique propositions against probiotics. This particular product never made it to market, partly because there are few manufacturers and most of them do not co-pack, but also because existing competitors are also very cheap and the proposition, while differentiated, did not quite match the consumer group that we think that market was in catering for. We then launched into pouches, first into label pouches and then into fully printed. This started to get some really good traction but was never a long-term vision. The taste was a little bit what you would call marmite. Um, some people loved it or they struggled. The biobat naturally has a tart sour taste and interestingly, uh, we found other cultures like Middle Eastern cultures that are more familiar with these tastes in the diet, warm to it very quickly. And while others struggled a bit at the start of it. So therefore, our most recent innovation and in work of Biotech 2.0 has been focusing on a more mass market friendly flavor, less biscuit wise juice that can be put into different packaging solutions uh, considering a recipe versus the process for easier manufacture. We have also worked with some of the best experts in London for taste improvement to bring this to market. As you can already tell, as a startup from the very early on, we've built like a culture of experimentation, innovation and failing fast into our DNA. Um, that's not always been easy, I have to admit. Um, we as a startup, we had limited funding and still starting out trying to work with very large companies, chunking sometimes by no fault of their own, very slow. You have four to six month lead times for a trial and you're always down that pecking order because of your size. And it's been really important for us, I guess, to build trusted relationships from the start with these partners that would buy into either of our product proposals and product uh, visions or our social purpose and have similar ethical supply chains that we can work with to grow and scale. So throughout this um, innovation and, and iteration cycle, we strive for environmental packaging, which is a question I, I always get and, and always been central to, to everything we do, but it was a tricky one to get right, to be fair. 
it is taking a huge amount of work, um, failure costs, going through more manufacturing partners um, for testing our resilience. But coupled with building a great taste profile, we've seen some amazing breakthroughs and really looking forward to a full launch in January. So in terms of a continuous innovation culture that we've really started to build and incorporate into everything that we do and responding to COVID at the same time, I guess the, the, the environment, I'm very sure the environment and sustainable supply chains will continue to play an important role with this. Uh, climate resilience, crop varieties for the communities that we work with, all the way to nutrient dense and immune boosting properties about increasing demand. COVID-19 has increased obviously the transparency on or the focus on transparency within supply chains and food systems across the globe and I'm just, I can see that just increasing as, as uh, more focus goes down to how we source and how we produce and actually sell those products going forward. So in terms of um, our startup journey, we are still 100% equity owned ourselves within the business and have been very fortunate to go through quite a few um, awards and uh, funding competitions, which has helped us iterate and develop where we are. And I think it's a very exciting time for us in terms of the growth and the iterations that we've done with our product to date. So I think the next stage really is we have an exciting product ready to go to market. Um, in the last couple of months before COVID hit, we've also been looking at different market segments. And although we are very early stages, we have a route to market partner in the US that's looking at um, um, supporting our product launch into those markets. They have experience uh, taking products from, uh, from other places in the world to the US up to $145 million uh, exit and have validated our product uh, across 75 retailers with two speed to market distributor programs. So the next step for us is really trying to drum as much traction as we can, um, bringing some investment to fund those inventories and to, to, to push that and scale that product as much as possible. So how can you support us? One of the first one investment I think I have already touched on, but consumption, um, have a look out on our website and our socials for when those uh, launch dates are announced. We'll be sure to also share some of the, the retail outlets that the, the product will be available for in the UK. And promotions, we always want to spread the word and spread the story. So if there is any opportunities that we could work with you, please do let me know. I do believe, uh, I'm not sure how I'm up for uh, Prina, but if anyone has any questions, I am very much happy to take them at this stage. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Isa, too, um, for speaking to us about innovation value chains for social impact and your journey with biotic. Um, we have finished slightly earlier, but um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to post them at the bottom in the question and answer box. Um, don't seem to have any questions currently. Um, just wait a couple of seconds to see if anyone has any. Okay, so no, oh yeah, we seem to have one here. So we have a question from attendee here. How scalable is biotic? Um, you mentioned in US. Yeah, very scalable. So in terms of the sort of markets though, there is huge opportunities for a high fiber prebiotic drinks range. So looking at the gut health market. I think the past few years have seen gut health at the forefront a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, markets because gut health is now seen to be connected not just to our stomach as a whole but to our brains and our, to our mental health. Um, the US is one of the biggest gut health markets out there from probiotics, prebiotics down to symbiotics and for our scalability we are working with one of the biggest manufacturers in the UK um, to provide that volume that we need in terms of scale and that is just the start of it. Hey, I hope that answered your question. Um, we have another question here from Pat. Um, 
I said to you, do you plan on taking this product to other parts of Africa? Yes, most definitely. Um, I think Biobab is consumed in different ways across Africa. And I think this would be a unique proposition to do. Um, it will have to be iterated or let me say, we'll have to be clever about how it is innovated upon to make it more viable and also more accessible, if that is the main reason we're taking it there, so people can have access to it in terms of the price point and um, the retail points that you'll be buying to. But yes, there is some opportunity. We have all the pro uh, product in our portfolios as well that we believe are more even suited to those markets, and that is a work in progress. Thank you. Um, next question is, how do you balance being good to suppliers with getting a fair deal? Example, you may have to leave them one day to get a better deal. It's a difficult one, I have to admit, and it's something that we are always juggling um, as a startup and as a business. Um, and it's difficult to get right when you're small in many ways. And I think I touched on one of the packaging uh, options that we have had to do as a uh, positioning to show customers of where it sits, but never went ahead with it because one of the things was the price point. So it's always balancing this, this act, right, of how cheaply do I get it, how cheaply do I sell it, and what do I make? And as a business or as a business on that mission, it's a difficult one, but at the end of the day, having a strong core mission of why you exist and who you want to work with, I think always will inform what you actually choose to do next. Yeah. If that helps in terms of answer that. Yeah, no, thank you very much. And I think we have one final question here. How much investment are you looking for to support with scaling the product? Currently, we are looking at around £500,000. Um, the next stage of our growth with the US is, is a huge opportunity and very strong interest that we believe will make a big difference to the sort of volumes we're looking at to make this viable. We've already been to the US two times on two different trade shows and to meet different partners. And we know that the opportunity is there. Our product has already been validated with quite 75 retailers looking at opportunities within this area. So we do know that with that funding, um, we can make this scale. Great, I hope that answered your question to that delegate who asked that. Um, we have another question here from Pat. In terms of exchange rate, how will you manage the cost of the products in overseas markets? Uh, that's a good question. It, again, a good one. I think some of the markets that we've deal with are quite relatively stable than what most people would think. Uh, in, within our team, we have someone that's really good at this and probably would have been the best person to answer this. But we have had from the beginning, um, had some really good mentoring, really both members brought in to be able to, to look at that and support us uh, through our journey with that. And it hasn't been a, a big issue for us that we've witnessed. But we have someone in the team in case that ever arises as well. Okay. Um, I have another question comment here from Manoj. Um, thank you for the insightful presentation. Gut health is absolutely the root for all human disease. Um, and Naveen and Ted, billion dollar ventures are testament to this. If you receive the funding, what is the next stage? So can you repeat that? If, if I receive the investment, I'm looking for what is the next stage of our growth? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, so we're, uh, we're looking at really key uh, uh, skills that we want to bring into the team. But one of the main uh, pain points I guess we have is funding for inventory. So bringing skills in, funding for that inventory, and really just going into light scale manufacturing growth. Okay, Manoj, I hope that answered your question. I think um, that's all we have um, for today. But um, finally, I'd just like to say a very big thank you to ISA2 for joining us and being part of the Virtual Innovation Summit today. Um, but also thank you to everyone who's, who's joined this last talk for the evening. Um, and that's it. Is anything else you'd like to say, ISA2, before we end today's talk? Yeah, most definitely. It was a pleasure meeting you. And I do want to thank you all for the opportunity. Um, I think the, the virtual summit was an amazing event today. Um, definitely, thanks for the opportunity. And I look forward to connecting with you all very soon. Great. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Prina. Thanks. Thanks again.